Today, we're going to be discussing Thunder Core. Now, Thunder Core is an exciting new blockchain that will be bringing the kind of scaling for Ethereum dApps that is actually needed to take them to that next level to invite in millions of crypto users. Now, before we unpack exactly what Thunder is doing, I want to give a massive thank you to the team over at Thunder Core for supporting the channel by sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump into what Thundercore is. At a high level, Thundercore is building a public blockchain platform that is fast, scalable, and secure. Years of academic research are coming together in order to make Thunder, which is pretty awesome. I love academic research. And they're making it mathematically provable which is an awesome bonus, without a doubt. It is EVM compatible, which of course, considering how much is built on Ethereum is incredibly important. And that means that anyone who is building or has built on Ethereum can transition to Thunder in minutes with little or no modifications to their dApp. Thunder is promising to deliver high throughput, fast confirmation times and lower costs all with the intention of making it quick and easy for dApps to deploy and to scale as they are intended to do with sub-cent gas costs and confirmation times in the seconds or a near instant experience in terms of what the users are going to see. Thundercore achieves a transaction per second load of thousands while ensuring that the level of decentralized trust that is essential in a crypto network is maintained. The Thundercore mainnet launched on February 28th, 2019, but it is actually a limited mainnet at the moment. As at this stage, it is actually lacking particularly staking of tokens, but that will come soon and Thunder will soon launch its proof of stake on the mainnet. Now, Thunder is deploying what it is naming decentralization with the benefits of centralization. Now this is actually an interesting concept as of course the benefit of a more centralized system is that it can have crazy fast speeds. But a blockchain which is leveraging elements of a more centralized system in terms of processing on top of its decentralized protocol is actually a quite interesting idea and making it work well and securely is what Thunder is trying to do. So Thunder is trying to make that bridge between these two concepts. And on the one hand, it is a fully decentralized method for running a public EVM compatible blockchain. But on the other hand, it does have the performance of a more centralized solution. Now this combination of more centralized and more decentralized approach is being called the Thunderella paradigm. The scalability and speed of a centralized service is being brought via what they're calling the fast chain, while the decentralization and security is coming from the slow chain. Let's break this down how it works. So the fast chain is executed by a committee of stakeholders and it is coordinated by a central authority, which is called the accelerator. The job of the accelerator is to make transactions and data on chain linear. Now, assuming that the accelerator is correctly doing its job and that the network conditions are good and that more than 75% of the committee are actually functioning correctly, then the slow chain does not actually need to be called on very often. And the transactions can be confirmed on the fast path nearly instantly with a very high throughput. However, what if these good conditions are not met? Well, if, for example, less than 75% of the committee is malfunctioning or perhaps the accelerator is under attack, then Thunder will automatically fall back onto 
the slow chain in order to have that decentralized protection that the blockchain offers, as that, of course, is where the security is actually being taken care of on the slow chain. Now, Thunder is using Ethereum as its fallback chain. This is leveraged in a few different ways. The first is via regular checkpointing, thus ensuring that even if there is an attack, that Thunder cannot be rewound before that checkpoint. This also guarantees finality of transactions. The second way the slow chain supports the fast chain is via censorship resistance, whereby any Thunder Core users can actually have the option to call on Ethereum to ensure that a transaction is seen. And finally, Ethereum is used for dispute resolution. So should any disputes arise between the accelerator and the validator committee nodes, particularly, of course, should some entities actually be acting in a malicious way, then there exists a predictable path to resolve those disputes by leveraging the power of the Ethereum slow chain. Fast chain will be run on a staking system consisting of 500 nodes elected via a provably fair system among the parties who put their stake in. Now the 500 nodes and the one accelerator will be rewarded for their work on producing blocks and validating transactions by transaction fees and also by a preset participation pool. While the initial deployment of Thunder is relying on only one accelerator, future iterations of the project will be increasing the system to support multiple shards. The Thunder tokens are Thunder Core's native cryptocurrency, which of course will be used to pay for gas fees and in the selection of the 500 committee members as well as stake payout to those committee members. Now the ability to not only have this much greater scalability, but also the ability to easily move these Ethereum-based decentralized applications over to Thunder because it supports Solidity, it supports Ethereum contracts, should mean that developers will actually find Thunder to be a very attractive place to host their dApps. And any ETH-based dApps can actually migrate to Thunder Core in as little as five minutes to prove that they actually went out and made a video of them doing that very thing. So it does work, and it's really cool to see that happening. Now this works with also existing tools like MetaMask, and a recent partnership with Trust Wallet is actually seeing eight usable dApps coming to Trust Wallet hosted on Thunder Core. Now the dApps are Stuff like a search word blitz, which is kind of like Scrabble and a Space Invader style game and six other quite simple game applications. And it's nice to see that there are some dApps already on Thunder Core. But of course, what we need is something really awesome, something really addictive, something like that coming to Thunder. They'll make Thunder a household name. We don't have that dApp yet. They also have a range of other partners like Liquidity Network, which is a provider of non-custodial payment hubs that allow users to make transactions off chain, all without the use of a trusted third party intermediary. Thunder was also able to attract investment from some of the biggest and the most influential venture capital funds in the crypto game, which is no small feat without a doubt and says a lot about the quality of the project. The team here is also really a standout as the key development team of Thunder Core is made up of some of the true pioneers in the crypto industry, particularly in smart contracts and in distributed algorithms, hailing from the upper echelons of American academia which just to me underlines the, the kind of, not just the rigorous academic approach that we see these teams pursuing, but also of really this, this breakthrough scalability and this ability to approach the trilemma of blockchain and decentralization. Anyway, I, I wanna highlight a few of the names here just to give you an idea about the team and who these people are. First, there is the chief scientist, 
Her name is Professor Elaine Shi. Now she has been studying consensus protocols in distributed systems for nearly a decade. And she published the first academic papers and also she taught the first university courses on Bitcoin and smart contracts. So kind of a serious boss lady to have on board here. Now, she is also working together with someone called Professor Raphael Pass, who she co-authored Thunderella with, which is, of course, the mathematically proven consensus protocol upon which Thundercore is based. Now, if it was just Professor Xi, that would be impressive. But the CEO of Thunder is Chris Wang. Now, he is the youngest ever PhD of computer science graduate from Carnegie Mellon University, and he previously co-founded and sold a company called Playdom, which is a gaming ecosystem company. He sold it to Disney for $500 million. Nice one. Also a boss move, to be honest. And I think that underlines really just what an impressive team this is, and there's lots of other great players on the team, but that just gives you a bit of an idea. Now looking forward to the roadmap, the main net public launch is slated for quarter three of this year. So that comes along with those staking pools on the main net. 2020 will bring cross chain assets and increased scalability up to 10,000 transactions per second. 2021 will see multiple blockchains as the slow chain and even privacy support could be coming for Thunder Core. Now, what are my concerns about Thunder? Well, the first is that there's only one accelerator. Even though this will be sharded in the future and the accelerator cannot freeze or pause anyone's transactions, it just sits there and processes transactions. But still, this is centralized in a way which I think that some crypto enthusiasts may not appreciate. Even if there are 500 staking nodes and even if there is a backup onto Ethereum, this is something that may concern some. Now that brings me to my second point. Ethereum, while failing to scale currently, it's not dead, it's far from it. And Ethereum may actually be a competitor itself to what Thunder is doing in the future. As well as, of course, many of the other different blockchains that try to focus on being faster than, but compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine, and of course, which are trying to attract those same developers over to their chains. And that's not saying that Thunder is not up to the challenge. They absolutely have a novel approach here and they have big backing, but still something to consider. Okay. There's a lot of awesome things to like about Thunder as well. Scalability obviously is such a hot topic in crypto right now and is holding back the future of dApps and Thunder is bringing it. And it is trying to lure the biggest developer community for crypto, which is the Ethereum Solidity community over to its chain. Considering the speed and the, the ease of using Thunder and of moving to Thunder, I suspect that we will see some more refugees jumping ship from Ethereum and coming over. Add into that powerful tech and the, that the team is very impressive and we certainly have a compelling project that I have a feeling we're gonna be hearing a lot more about over the coming years. Now, if you do want to pick yourself up some Thunder tokens, then check out the IEO, which will happen on Huobi on May 9th. They'll be selling $500,000 of Thunder tokens, which is quite a small amount. Actually, it's less than 1% of the supply. However, if you don't get into the IEO, then do be careful of that initial exchange listing hype, but also watch out to grab some Thunder tokens at a good price after it does get listed if you're keen on getting yourself some Thunder as it will be listed on public markets just after the IEO. Anyway, just my two Satoshis on Thunder Core. You guys let me know what you think about Thunder down below in the comment section. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. You guys are super awesome. If you did enjoy the video, leave a thumbs up on it. You can always subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.